Oh there guys, so uh, we are going to further our knowledge in the descriptive geometry section where we are talking about coordinates. Uh, we have two coordinates displayed there below, A and B. I've also included uh, my O, X, O, Y, O, Z axes. And um, we're going to be plotting these coordinates and we're going to find the true length of the lines. Remember we spoke about having two dots that are joined to one another. Uh, providing us a line and this is obviously the line that we need to find the true length of. Okay, so let's look at the actual coordinates. The coordinates of A in this case over here, remember we are going to be dealing with an OX, an OY, and an OZ coordinate. Okay, so first we have a 60 as my OX coordinate. I don't have my ruler in case um, you, you need to go and measure from uh, the center point which is O along the O X axis okay you're going to have a measure let's say for instance for having a lack of uh, measurements I have measured that that distance is going to be 60 okay I have the O X axis now I have to go and find 10 for the O Y axis so if I'm going up towards the O Y axis over here I measure 10 and I then project across which means I now would have found my point along in my front view um, now I've also been given an OZ axis uh, a measurement and that coordinate is 30 so if I had to project this one down orthographically remember this all has to be orthographically correct then I would then measure away on the OZ axis a distance of 30. I'd go OZ, I'd measure my 30 for instance, and I'd then project it out across. And where these two collide or intersect will then obviously be my next representation of that point A on the top view. Okay, so I now know that if I'm going to be labeling them, I'm going to be labeling them with a small representation. Uh, small letter A and A1 and if I orthographically project this into my left side view I will then go across to my 45 and up I'll then have this project right across and where they then intersect I'll have my left si side view representation A2 okay then we have point B we're going to go find 30, which is on the OX axis. This was 60, so I know halfway about is going to be my 30 point. In your case over here, um, if you are going to be leaving 10 millimeters away from each one of these axes, uh, it's not really the case in the OX, OY, OZ um, system over here. When they give you the coordinates, you literally are measuring away from the center point. Okay, so you measure your 30. Then we have 50 as your OY, from OY up you'll go nice and high, let's say that is with your ruler, you're going to measure your 50 and then your 10 away from your OZ axis, so there we go down, then let's say that is 10 millimeters and I'm going to use once again my projection lines with a ruler, because you guys want to be accurate, I'm doing it by freehand to save some time. Uh, those are going to give me the two intersection points for B in my front view and in my top view. That's going to be B and this is going to be B1. And then obviously I want to go ahead and find that in my left side view as well. So I'm going to project that up and across. Okay. So that was very, very basic. B2, like I have A2. Remember we said that we have A2. 1 and B1 or A and B represent an actual suspended point in mid-air or points for that matter capital A and capital B All right, so we're going to join these two join them and join them so if I have to look from this side over here I would definitely see my left side view is so I to look from the top down I'll definitely see my line as so which means it is actually at an incline to my actual 
vertical plane, but we'll get to that point in a moment when we deal with our true lengths. Okay, so now that we have all our coordinates plotted and we have the lines drawn, let's go ahead and answer the second question. The true length of line AB. Now when we're talking about the true length of line AB, we literally cannot determine the true length of line AB because as I s uh, said in a moment ago, that if I looked at my top view, I'd have this guy further away from my vertical plane. If this is my vertical plane over here, this is my horizontal plane, if we're looking at the planes model, this would be folded up like this, giving me my horizontal. I've unfolded it and put it nice and flat. And that these two points were on my horizontal plane. So if that's the case and I had to flop it back up, I would have something like this. Okay, which means I cannot determine looking from it from a 90 degree angle over here the true length between these two points over here A and B alright so in this case here I'll have to use the generation of a cone method okay you'll have to bring in your handy tools we'd have to start opening up from A or from B to A that doesn't really matter which way you want to go it's generated from A okay so we have the length of A to B I pin it in my board over here I go ahead and I scribe an arc now please note that I'm going to do this in freehand so this arc over here is going to give me a point over here that arc would look something like that okay once I have done that I'm going to take my ruler and I'm going to project it up to my front view remember please note that A didn't move point B did however move so I am forcing B or B1 for that matter to be down here because I want to see it at a 90 degree angle and once I've done that I simply project that up and because A didn't move, A in this view cannot move, yet B here must move because this line here represents that line. It's the same line suspended in mid-air. It's just the front view of it and the top view of it. So therefore, if B had moved in my top view, it would most definitely have moved in my front view, simultaneously for that matter. Therefore, I have B there. Now I note, I've taken B right across. And note that this becomes capital B. I now would have to go and redraw my line and find point or line A, B. Okay. So that's how we find the true length line of line A, B.